Hey everyone, welcome to Tutorial Guide that will be split into several videos showing you tips, tricks, and overall help you improve at the new DST event, The Forge. One of the things you should note is that there are four roles in The Forge, the DPS, the tank, the healer, and the runner. Please note that most of these roles can be interchangeable with other characters. Today we will be taking a look at the tank role. The tank role is mostly filled by the characters Wolfgang, WX78, and Wigfrid, with Winona being a wild card. These characters are considered tanks due to their health pulls and ability to use melee weapons. Wolfgang has a big 200 HP and is able to go mighty when his health gets low, which deals 2 times more damage, gives increased defense, and a speed boost. WX78 has a good 150 HP and has a chance to electrocute enemies when attacked. His electric attacks also do increase 50% damage. Wigfred also has 150 HP and grants nearby teammates an extra 25% damage when her battle cry activates. Wigfred also gains less aggro when attacking. Winona is considered a wild card because of her wide variety of weapons and stats. These characters are interchangeable and are not a must, though I do recommend that you have at least one tank on the team, either Wolfgang or WX78. Now, onto what you should do in the forge as the tank. When playing tank, you are basically leading the team on what enemies everyone should focus. As a tank, you will also be taking damage head on. In the earlier stages, it is best to stick with your other tank buddy or lead the group to one side so that everyone can focus on those enemies together. Also in the earlier stages, the living staff won't be available, so you have to pay extra attention to your health during those times. An important tip for tanks is that even after the living staff drops, it is better to not put 100% trust into your healer until you have observed how and when they heal. You should always treat the way you tank as if the living staff hasn't dropped. Some healers won't have good placements and prioritizations, so be cautious of that. One of the more killer waves for the tanks, aside from the champion fight, is the wave against scorpions. The wave against scorpions are a killer due to the scorpion's ability to shoot poison at you. The scorpion's regular attacks aren't that bad and can be taken quite easily, but the poison that they shoot is the real damage dealer. The scorpion's poison drains health over time, for a short period of time, but it drains your HP very quickly. This can cause death very fast, as the poison will even drain you to 0 HP if you don't have enough health when hit. The poison can easily be cured by walking to the healing circle of casted by the living staff. When playing as a tank, the melee weapon's special ability are AoE based. Knowing when to use this is very important, as because it does an AoE attack, you could potentially do more harm than good. What I mean by that is if there is a Maxwell or a Wicker Bottom on the team, they have the ability to use the Petrifying Tome Book. This book allows them to petrify groups of enemies, rendering them useless for a bit. The tank's AoE attack can actually free the petrified enemies if it hits them, allowing the enemies to continue fighting instead of being frozen. So before you use your weapon's ability, make sure that the area it is going to affect is not going to mess with the other enemies who are frozen. On the other hand though, the weapon's ability can also break the enemy's guards. It means that Snortuses and Borillas that hide in their shell can be broken out by using your weapon's ability. As a tank, you are kind of leading the team into what enemies should be focused down. So I will tell you what enemies you should prioritize first and what to leave last. Please note, you don't always have to follow these guidelines, it's just something to keep in mind. In terms of who to focus first, it should go Croc Commander, then Pigs, then Scorpions, and finally the Snortuses. I don't include the Borillas in the Champion because, well, it should be pretty obvious. Now there is a bit of a debate when it comes to focusing either the Pigs or the Croc Commanders first. Some people say focus the Pigs first because they come in groups and can output damage fast together. Some say focus Croc Commanders because they can buff the other enemies and they hit stronger. For me personally, I focus the Croc Commanders because I treat them kind of like the Nomad Commanders from Borderlands. They are sort of the commander of the group, and taking them out will make it easier for the rest of the pigs to be taken out easily. I also focus them because they are able to place down multiple battle standards, which makes it even more difficult to kill the enemies because that equals more defense. All in all, it's up to you and your team to decide on what to focus. Next I said to focus scorpions before snortuses. Now this is something I would actually recommend, because not only are snortuses slow and can hide in their shells for periods of time, the scorpions are more deadly than the snortuses. I say focus scorpions first because they have the ability to poison you which I talked about earlier. Taking them out before focusing the snortuses overall makes the wave easier and you won't have to worry about dying to the poison all the time. Now the barillas and champions are set in stone, you basically just have to tank them as your role would assume. There really is no tactic when it comes to fighting the barilla as his damage can easily be out healed while standing in the healing circle and he doesn't attack in quick patterns. The only thing I would say is when the Barilla hides in a shell, not everyone should automatically use their weapon's ability to break them out at once. If you can, try to stack your abilities so that when one person's ability is on cooldown, another person will have theirs ready to break the Barilla out of his shell again. The Champion is always the hardest, as he is the final boss and deals massive amounts of damage. There are a few things you can do to make the fight smoother, however. 
One is to never, ever, ever continue to attack the champion while he's trying to sleep. Doing that will only increase your team's chances of losing. Two is when the champion spawns the pigs, try to group all the mobs together in one healing circle so that everyone can unleash their ability so that the pigs can be instantly taken care of. The last thing you should also try to do as a tank is when you see the green healing circle start to appear, not only should you stop attacking, but if possible, try to stick as close to the champion as possible so he won't run away. Sticking close to the champion ensures that his chances of being put to sleep are greater as he won't chase down other people and leave the circle because of it. One last thing you can also try is stunning him right as the circle appears so that he won't move. This move is kinda risky though as he has a good chance of being able to get the last hit in as your team tries to heal up. Now let's move on to the armor. For armor there are a couple of things. The chest pieces for the tanks are the jagged wooden armor, the stone split mail, and the steadfast stone armor. The ideal chest piece for the tank is the steadfast stone armor, as it has a 90% damage reduction, knockback resistance, but reduces your speed by 15%, which doesn't really matter since you're a tank. There are two steadfast stone armors that drop, so both tanks are able to use it. The stone split mail is a temporary armor for the tank, as only one drops, and it drops earlier than the steadfast stone armor. The stone split mail gives a good 85% damage reduction, so it is good when it first drops, but should be switched out with the steadfast stone armor, so that a DPS or a runner can use a stone split mail instead. The jagged armor can also be worn by the tanks, but it really depends on how your team is set up in order for the tanks to wear it. For the most part, Wigford tanks should wear the armor, but again, it all depends on your setup. The jagged wood armor gives a 75% damage reduction, and gives a 10% damage increase. It does drop fairly early, so it will be switched out eventually for the bigger armors. Now for the helmets, there are also a couple of things tanks can wear. The helmets that the tanks can wear are any of the barb helmet tiers, the flower headband, and the blossom wreath. The barb helmets allow you to do more damage which is good for tanks or the DPS. The flower headband is a tank specific armor piece as it gives the wearer a 25% increase in healing received which allows for faster health regen. Finally, the blossom wreath can also be classified as a tank specific armor as it gives a 2 HP per second regen to gain up to 80% of your health back a 10% faster cooldown rate, and a 10% boost in movement speed. For the main armor combo, you should wear the steadfast stone armor with the flower headband. This combo should be given to the main tank, or the tank that receives the most damage. An important note, don't just grab everything in sight, as this is a team based game and you most likely won't need that item. Well that completes the guide for the tank roll. You are now able to stand strong in the forge, take hits, and dish out hits in the best way possible. Once again, these characters are interchangeable and are not locked to them. They just make the drop easier. This concludes the last of the role guides, as I have covered the DPS, the healer, the runner, and finally, the tank. I might make more tutorial guides in the future if people request it, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and good luck in the forge.